Hello, my name is David Klamage, also known as Rangsk on the internet, um, and this is my submission for the uh, Cracking the Cryptic Contest Sudoku by Sam Kappelman Lines. Uh, this Sudoku was extremely difficult, um, but I also found it extremely fun, and I actually ended up working with my sister, Jessica, on this puzzle, and we've worked together to come up with what we believe to be a fun, if not intended, way of solving the puzzle. It wasn't quite clear to us uh, exactly how to do perfect logic on it, but um, I think what we've come up with is pretty interesting, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing to notice is these five little killers. Uh, obviously, they have to be uh, between 1 to 4. They either are 1, 4, or 2, 3 each. And I'm going to color these blue. And what blue will mean is that they are cells that have to be between 1 and 4. And I'm going to use orange for cells that are the opposite, that are 5 through 9. Of course, I'll leave cells alone if it's unclear. So the next step is to look at this 29 cage. And actually, 29 and 4 values can only be 5, 7, 8, 9. So those are going to be orange. And we can mark those as 5, 7, 8, 9. So the next thing to notice is that um, if we wanted to have in any of these cages, or in general in a cage with four cells, two blue cells, that is two cells that are 1 through 4, the maximum value we could make would be 3, 4, 8, 9, which happens to add to 24, which is one less than all of these cages. So what that tells you is that none of these cages can have more than one blue cell in them. Uh, they could have zero blue cells, but they can't have two blue cells or more. So if we were to look at box 5, the um, most each of these cages could contribute is one blue cell. Now I'm not saying it's here, but if they were to contribute a blue cell, we couldn't say have two from the 28 box. That's what I'm trying to say. So one of them's going to be blue and one of them's going to be orange. And this is just to demonstrate. Uh, it could be, could be the opposite like this. Um, but what the point is that every box has to have four blue cells in it because there's four numbers, which means that we can deduce that the center cell must be blue. It has to be between 1 and 4. So now I'm going to uncolor these to avoid confusion. And now we can look at the 28. So we know, uh, And also, I guess, the other conclusion we can get from this is that each one must provide exactly one blue cell. Uh, we can't pick a sum that does not include a blue cell. So for 28, 4, 7, 8, 9, which is the largest we can make, um, four cells that have a blue cell in them actually adds to 28 exactly. So we have to do 4, 7, 8, 9. And on top of that, in order for the blue cell to be in this box, the, the 4 can't be down here. So we know that these two are orange, and we know that there's a 4 in one of these two cells. For 27, now we can't use 4, because 4 is already used up in the box. So we have to use 3, and what do you know, 3, 7, 8, 9 adds to 27. So we can do the exact same thing, where 3 must be inside box 5, and then the rest of the cage is at 7, 8, 9. So again, we can color these outside ones orange. Uh, and then if we look at box 5 now, we can see that the only numbers remaining are 1, 2, and 6. Because we, there's a lot of ways to see this, but we essentially have a 3, 4, 7, 8, 9 sextuplet, <laughs> um, which means 1, 2, 6 is the only ones remaining. But of course, this blue cell can't be 6, because we determined it was blue, which means it's 1 through 4. And this will come to su no surprise to no one, but 6 is greater than 4. Um, so that means that 6 actually has to be in one of these two cells. Um, and we can actually determine that the 6 can't be with the 1, because 6 plus 1 plus 8 plus 9 is only 24. It's not 25. So the 1 can't be 
in this cage, and that actually sets what the cage is. It's 2, 6, 8, 9. So these are orange, and I can get rid of these corner marks because it's a 2, 6 pair. And because of the 2, 6 pair, that means that this center one is a 1. So we have our first digit, finally. Um, I think that's a really cool break-in, and I'm pretty sure that's the intended break-in here. Uh, the other thing we can see is that now the 5, in order for there to be a 5 in this box, the 5 has to, has to come from the 29 cage. Okay, so next um, we can apply Fissimethel's theorem, um, which I'm not going to explain here, um, but I'm assuming the, uh, again, Sam likely intended for that to be used. But basically, all of the cells in these four corners have to equal exactly the cells in this ring. So, if we look, this ring has eight orange and eight empty cells, and these boxes, these groups of four, have eight blue cells and eight empty cells, which means that there are exactly eight blue and eight orange, so these have to be orange and these have to be blue. Uh, in addition to that, these orange ones actually only come from 7, 8, and 9. Um, now we don't know which ones are 7, 8, or 9, but we know that they're not anything else. So we can fill 7, 8, 9 here, and I might as well fill these as 1, 2, 3, 4. And this can't be 3, this can't be 4, this can't be 2. Now the next thing to notice is we have this pinwheel pattern in these cells, which is a direct consequence of, of using Fistomethel's theorem. So notice in, in all of these outer boxes, these corner boxes, there's no 5 or 6 uh, penciled in. So the consequence of that is that the 5s and 6s have to be in these cells. But let's take 5 for example. If 5 were ended up in one of these two, then that excludes it from these, which puts 5 here, which excludes it from these, which puts 5 here, which excludes it from these, which puts 5 here. So we don't know if 5 is there or not, but either 5 is in these cells or 5 is in these cells. So I'm actually going to end up coloring that. So I'm going to color this part of the pinwheel gray and I'm going to get rid of these fives, and I'm going to color this part of the pinwheel green. Okay, so the next thing that we can look at is this nine sum. One thing to notice about this box is normally if we were just looking at this nine sum, we would say that the minimum these cells could be would be three. Uh, however, there's a couple things to notice. One is, first of all, these add to five using one, two, three, four. So if we were going to use 1, 2, 3, 4 here as well, these would also have to add to 5. But in addition to that, we have another blue cell here. So we can't have both of these be blue. Only one of them can be blue. So for the minimum calculation, we have one blue and one red. So the absolute minimum for a blue is 1, and the absolute minimum for a red is 5, which means these actually, at minimum, add to 6. So that would make, at maximum, these outsides add to 3. So we know that they come from 1 or 2. So if we calculate the maximums here, um, these two could be 1s at minimum, which add to 2, which means these add to 7 at maximum. So at minimum they add to 6, and at maximum they add to 7, which is highly restricted. So 6 would have to be 1, 5. Um, we can't use 2, 4 because that would prevent both of the possibilities of 5 here. Um, and also it would be two blues. <laughs> um, and we said that 6 was the minimum uh, from one blue, one red. Um, we can also do uh, 1, 6 to make 7, or we can do 2, 5 to make 7. So the next thing to notice is we do have a 2, 6 pair here. So that actually sets this value to 1. And I can actually uh, color these two as blue, just to keep, uh, keep the coloring going. And so this is a 1 or a 2. 
this one actually cleans up the one for a possibility from here and the one for a possibility from here. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent now and show that some property of these five sums that isn't immediately obvious. So the fives are going to be one, four, or two, three. Let's just pick two, three. Let's say the five ends up being a two, three sum. What would happen if, say, this one were also a two, three sum? Well, now the twos and threes in column eight and nine are used up. So that means in, that in box six, the two and three must be in this column. Well, these can't be two and three, which means that this cell would have to be a Schrodinger cell. It would have to be a two and a three, which is obviously not allowed. So that means we have to avoid having the two, three vertical with another two, three. Now, the same exact thing happens horizontally. If this is two, three, and this is two, three, again, this cell would have to be two and three. It can't even be a three, but it also can't be both values. So what that means is if we end up with, just undoing here, if we end up with this ending up being two, three, we have to make sure that both of these are one, four. So all of that to say, what would happen if this were a one? Well, if this were a one, that would actually cause this to be a two, three, which we know would then cause this to be four, one, and this to be one, four because the one here would prevent this from being one four. Now, the consequence of that is a one is removed from this cell, from this one, and a one is removed from this cell, from this one. Well, now we've just blown the bank because I mean, even two six adding up to eight, that, that blows our nine sum. So that means this can't be a one. So I'm gonna undo all the way back to there. So the consequence of that is that this is a 2, which means these add to 3, which means we actually have to make this add to 6. And in order to make this add to 6, the only way we could do that was with 1, 5. So now this is 1, 5. The 1 in the box, the 1, 5 pair in the box, now removes 1 as a possibility from these, and that means that this has to be a 2, 3, which means that actually this is 4, 1. And then this is a 1, 4 pair. The 1 here actually comes back up and gives us 5 and 1, and this one comes over and gives us 4 and 1, and now we have a bunch of digits. We wouldn't say we're cooking with gas, but we're, we're much happier about the, the state of things, that's for sure. Uh, the next thing to notice is we actually do have a hidden single 1. So none of these can be 1. We have the 1 in this column, we have the 1 in these rows, and this orange can't be a 1. So 1 has to go here. And so that removes the one four from here. And actually, oh, I put a five in there. That's a four, sorry. Uh, this can't be four one either. So this is a two three, which is good because we didn't want to have the vertical or, or horizontal two threes matching up. So the one four in this box removes the, those possibilities here. This one here removes the possibility here. Um, this two three removes two three possibility here. So that's actually a four. And this can't be a two because there's a two in the box, so this is a one. Get even more numbers. Four can no longer be in this column, neither can one, so that makes a two, three pair here. And the two, three here makes this a one, four. All right, so I believe that's all the cleanup we need to do, or can do. Uh, next, uh, we're gonna focus on column three. So in column three, where can a 2 go? Well, the 2 can't be here because these two are 2, 3 pair. There can't be a 2 here. Sorry, <laughs> obviously this 2, 3 is resolved. So now these two can't be a 2. And so the, the only place for a 2 in this column is here. Also, where can 3 go? Well, first we need to do a pencil mark. So 3 can't go here because of this 3. So 3 and the, uh, can't go here because of these uh, pencil mark 3s. So 3 is in one of these two. So those point at this square, this cell. This 3 can't be here. And obviously the 2, 3 pair here means 3 can't be here. So now this has to be a 3. And that 3 is actually extremely good because that's going to come over to here. So 
we can't have a 3 in this cell anymore. This cell is now orange, which makes this cell blue and the 3. And at that point, um, the usefulness of my orange and blue colors has run out, so I'm going to remove those. Oops, let's just take this one thing at a time. And we're actually going to repurpose what our colors mean at this point. I'm going to keep the pinwheel because the pinwheel pattern uh, still needs to place the sixes. So notice on this pinwheel, now that we've uh, removed all the colors, we can see that we actually placed a five on the grays, which means that these grays must have fives on them, as explained earlier. Um, when we still aren't sure where the sixes are, the sixes could be on the grays, which would make these five six pairs, or the six could be on the greens, in which case these would be the sixes pencil marked. Uh, but we can't figure that out yet. So now, this is a really cool, um, I'm sure this was also intended. Um, I'm going to use colors uh, for seven, eight, and nine. So notice there aren't any seven, eights, or nines actually placed in the grid, so they're all completely interchangeable at this point, other than this one little oddity where they're can't be a 7 in the 25 cage. Um, so that along with the 50 sum will actually end up doing some work for us. But in the meantime, they're interchangeable. But they are still different numbers. Uh, so we want to track them in some way. So I'm going to call this square blue. Now if this were a 7, then that means blue is 7. If this were 8, blue is 8, etc. Um, we don't know what it is, but we know that it's 7, 8, or 9, and whichever one it is, that is blue. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'll put a 7 in here. So if, if we do put a 7 in here, what happens is there can no longer be a 7 in the box. So whatever these ones are, they aren't blue. So we can give them different names. And it, it would be the same for, for 8 and 9. If I, if I were to put an 8 in here, then these couldn't be 8s. And then so for the 7 and 9, we would call those different colors as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So we have blue, which means that this one, which is different 7, 8, or 9 from the blue, I'm going to color orange. And then this one, which is yet again a different 7, 8, or 9 from the blue and orange, I'm going to call that purple. So we don't know which is which, but between blue, orange, and purple, we have a 7, 8, and 9 represented now. So the next thing we can see is that blue can't be here. And each of these cages have 7, 8, and 9. So they need a blue, orange, and purple in them. And because this square can't be blue, that leaves only purple for it, which means this one's blue. Similarly, this one can't be orange, making it blue and this one orange. And similarly, now that orange is, is, can't be here, this one's orange, making this purple. And that actually feeds back, because this purple is guaranteed in this slot. Now, these were kind of pencil mark doubles. So like we can kind of think of this as a five purple pair, and this is a orange, a four orange pair uh, it would be a way to put it. So because this is a five purple pair, and now we know there's a purple here, this can't be purple. And so the only option for it is a five. So now we actually have a placed five, which is very cool and we know exactly where this purple is. Unfortunately, we cannot disambiguate these oranges yet, um, and to avoid confusion, I'm, I'm going to delete that color. So now from now on, hopefully, uh, it'll be apparent that the colors are for cells that are that one, unless I, I mention otherwise. Now we can look at this box. This 5 actually does work, uh, because now there's only one place for the 5 in this box. And if we now look at where 3s can go, threes are now restricted to be only here, and that actually resolves our two, three pair. Uh, that leaves this to be a two, six. And we can do some more pencil marks. So fours have to go here, and fives have to go here. And I believe that is everything we need. So. Let's look at these colors again. So purples actually see these squares. There's, there can't be another purple in, in these rows, which means purple is up here. And we know purple is not 3, it's 7, 8, or 9. So there's actually a purple, which I'm going to color it, up here. It's in one of these two. 
And that actually gives us another pair. It's kind of like two, a hidden double. It's a hidden five purple double would be a good way to put that. Because we have five corner marks here, and then you can consider this as a purple corner mark. Which means that if we were to put a four here, then both five and purple would have to go in this spot. And we know that purple doesn't equal five. It's seven, eight, or nine. So that's not possible. So this is not a four, which leaves only here to place a four. So the next thing uh, I want to show is this row is down to three candidates, which is three, six, and seven. And this can't be a three. So three is actually limited to these three squares. And the other thing I want to show, which is really cool, is when we previously, if we were to look at this 50 sum, we'd be kind of hopeless because there could have been a 9 in so many places. Uh, it wasn't even worth looking at. And we would just blow the bank with some ridiculously high 60s sum. So, however, if we look at this diagonal now, it's more restricted than we realize because there's an orange, a purple, and a blue on the diagonal. So those are three different values of 7, 8, 9. I don't know which is which, but I do know that these three add to 24 because 7 plus 8 plus 9 is 24, which means that the remaining ones must add to 26. So the other thing I'm going to show is that there is actually even more kind of hidden restriction here. So here in this box, we have a blue and a purple, which means that if this were a 7, 8, or 9, which we may need for our sum to get to 50, or we'd like to experiment with that, it would have to be whatever orange is. Similarly, this square, there's already an orange and a purple in its column. So if it were a 7, 8, or 9, it would have to be blue. All right, so the thing to notice is that what is the maximum these can add up to? They can't all be nines. So the maximum would be 24 plus 8 plus 9, which adds to 41. So at maximum, this is 41, which means at minimum, these two have to add to 9. And that's important to remember. So for example, if this ended up being 3 and 5, that's not possible because we can't make up the 50 sum. We'd only be able to get to 49 if we had 3, 5 here. So th th we're going to be investigating uh, what those values can actually be. Next, I will show that this can't be a 3, and it's pretty easy to see, but I'll, I'll walk through it. So if this were a 3, that chains down here to make a 2 and a 3. And in this column, these only these two could have been a 2, so that makes this a 2. And that 2 comes over to this 6. And that actually places a 6 here, uh, because it's the only place now in this column for a 6. So now we have the 3, 6 in the row. The 7 has to go here. And now, with that being a 7, this is a 7, 8, 9 triple. Or we, another way to put it is, with this 7, this is an 8, 9 pair. So with 7, 8, 9 already represented in this column, this being a 5, 7, 8, 9 uh, value, or a five purple pair, can't be purple anymore. So now that puts a five here. Now remember, we just said these two can't be three five, but if I put a three here, then this must be five, so therefore this can't be a three. So I'm going to back up, and I'm going to remove three as a possibility here, and I'm going to place a three here. And that actually does do some work for us. Places a two and a three there, and uh, I'm going to add some more pencil marks just to show that ones have to go here, fours have to go here. I'm going to get rid of these colors so that we don't confuse ourselves. I'm going to make this gray again. And I'm going to fill in a few more candidates. Remember this was six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, we can have uh, fours are up here. And I uh, did not clean this up, so this needs to be a 2. And actually, uh, where can 3 go in this box? It can only go here. So this is actually a 1, 4 pair. And 1 can only go in these two squares because of these ones. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to investigate is whether this 5 purple pair 
can have a 5 here as part of the 50 sum. So I'm going to put a 5 here, and the consequence of that is that now this one is guaranteed purple. And of course we can put a 5 here, but the big thing is that that makes this a 7, 8, 9 triple. So that means this has to be 6, and this is significantly reducing our sum at this point. So let's actually do the sum. 7, 8, 9 is 24, plus 11 is 35, which means we need 15 more in two cells. Well, there's no way if we put a 5 here that we'd get 15, because we can't put a 10 in this cell. So this is no longer 5, which means that it has to be blue. But let's look at what we've done here. So because of the 6 here, this is now a purple, five purple pair, just like this one was, because it already has an orange and blue in it. So if we look at the consequence of purples on box seven, well, this purple prevents that, this five purple pair prevents it from being here, and this purple prevents it from here. So I would want to make this cell purple. But at the same time, these two are blue, cutting out these, and this blue cuts out this column, and a three can't be blue. So this cell should be blue, but we just said it should be purple. So it's a Schrodinger cell that's both blue and purple, which means this isn't possible. So I'm going to undo all that, and the consequence of that means that this is not a 5, this is purple. So I can put a 7, 8, 9 there, and this is not purple, it's a 5. So we can uh, fill in some squares because of that. So. Um, now that we have that filled in, uh, we can fill in a 4 here, which, I don't know, maybe that was sitting there for a while, I can't remember. So the next thing I'm going to investigate is whether this cell can be a 6. And that, that does two things if it's a 6. One is it affects the 50 sum, makes it smaller, obviously. And it also puts 6s on the greens of our pinwheel, so we can immediately put 6s into these greens, as well as corner mark 6s here, which actually causes a 1, 4, 6 triple which heavily limits where 789 can be, because this square now has to be a 789. So we can start coloring these 789s much more effectively. So this column needs a purple. This column needs a blue. But also, if we look at where, uh, at this row, this 789 has to be orange. So now oranges now look up here, make this 789 an orange, and that then feeds right back down for this column and makes this blue. Well, now that this is blue, this can't be blue, making this one blue. And so the, these purples look down here and make this purple. So now we have a purple and a blue here, making this orange. Well, now we have two oranges looking up at this box making this orange. And that's a long-winded way of saying it causes a contradiction, because now we have two oranges in row 2, and that's obviously not possible. So by placing a 6 here, the way it, it, it affects the 789s and their colorings, it, it's going to cause two oranges in the, in the top row. And that's pretty fun. I'm sure there's probably a, a shorter path, but I liked, uh, I liked the coloring. So I went with that. So now that we know that this square is not a 6, it must be a 7. And as soon as we place that 7 on this green, well now the green pinwheels can't have 6 on them. So that means 6 is on the grays. So all of the grays are 5-6 pairs. So that's a 6, that's a 6, and that's a 5-6. So I'm going to remove these corner marks here, and I'm also going to remove the pinwheel coloring because it's no longer useful. It's just going to get confusing with all the coloring going on. And so now that this is a 5, 6, this is a 7, 8, 9, and we actually know the color, it has to be blue, and we're going to get a lot of coloring done. So uh, this 6 makes this a 7, 8, 9, so that's also blue. That places a 6 in this uh, cell, it's the only uh, value it can be. Additionally, this cell is a orange and is a 789. And now this box 9 needs a blue and a purple, 
and the blue is seen here. So this is purple, and this is blue. And now if we look at purples in box 7, uh, these can't be purple because of this one, these can't be purple because of this one, and this can't be purple. So this one is actually purple. And because it's purple, it can't be a 1 because 1 is not 7, 8, or 9. So this is a 7, 8, or 9, and we just took a pencil mark. So this is 1, this is 4, and this is 1. So now uh, we can continue and see that this has to be purple because of our orange and blue and the remaining one for the box is orange. That comes over here, makes this one purple. And the remaining ones in this box need to be blue and orange, and this sees purple and blue, so this needs to be orange. Makes this one blue. And now this seven has to be orange, and so now we know that orange is seven. That means is all of our oranges are seven, which is amazing. And also none of these other ones are seven, which I might as well fill in now. So these are eight nines. This is not a seven. So now this one is blue. I think I missed that earlier. And of these, this is now guaranteed blue or purple, and this one can't be purple. So this is blue, this is purple. We can look at this square now. So, first of all, uh, I think it's pretty easy to see that there has to be a two here. So, the only uh, candidates left are five and six for this cell. And it's on our 50 sum, we're getting there. So, the thing I'd like to point out about this 50 sum is I'm gonna color these two gray because these two have to be the same value. They either have to be both fives or both sixes, and that's pretty obvious to see from this five, six. If I, if I put a five here, that makes this a six, that makes that a five. If I put a six here, that makes this a five, and makes this a six. So it's either two fives or two sixes. Well, let's see what we need these to add up to. So we have our seven, eight, nine, which adds to 24, plus another seven, which adds to 31. And so we need 19 more to add to 50. So these three add to 19. Well, if these are both five, that adds to 10, that makes that a nine, that's possible. But if these are both six, that adds to 12, which would mean this has to be seven. Well, that's not possible because it's not orange. So the consequence of that is that these two are five and this is a nine. And you may notice we just put a nine in our purples. So now we get all of our purples to be nine. We get all of our blues to be 8. This 4 actually down here sees that this is 4, and so this is 7, which will make orange. This 2 sees this 6, so that's 6 and 2. And from here it's just Sudoku. Uh, this has to be, this is 3, 5 in this column, so that's 3 and 5. Uh, this has to be 6 and 7. This column is 6, 3, and 7. This can't be a 3 or 7, so here's 6. This can't be a 3, so this is 7, which is orange. That makes this a 3. We have the 7 now here, which should be the last orange. 6, this is a 6. And we have 6 and 5, and 4. Check. Looks good to me. All right. so. That is how you solve Sam Kepelman Line's puzzle. I have no idea how he said it. It is absolutely insane. I really liked the break-in uh, with the way the cages interacted uh, with box five. Um, and in general, I, I really enjoyed myself with finding this path. I'm also very interested in, in watching Sam's video uh, to see how he makes a fool of me, uh, see what I missed. But I am also pretty happy with the solve path that I found. Uh, because um, I feel it's, it's, it's relatively clean. There, there were some tangents that I had to go on, um, but ultimately focusing on the 50 sum, which was the only restriction left to, to deal with, really bore fruit. So I, I hope you enjoyed watching, and until next time, have a good one.